Hi guys, it's me Karen from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Hope you guys are doing great today. It's Sunday here in Florida and it's a little chilly. It's in the mid 50s, so brr. And I, that's no joke guys, I don't do cold. Um, but I really feel sorry for all you guys up north and especially those who are running into some you know, serious problems. Um, so my heart goes out to you guys, and I'm certainly thinking of you. But um, over the holidays, I had a dear, dear friend of mine who I hadn't seen in several years pay me a visit. Um, she's from Michigan, actually, um, outside of Jackson. I think she's, it's in Marshall. That's where she lives, Marshall, Michigan. And she paid me a visit and we were, of course, in the jewelry studio and she wanted me to make her a custom necklace. And this is her birthstone. It's an aquamarine and she's kind of uh, more on the side of a, you know, a simple, simpler style. Um, doesn't get into the glitz and glam of things. So uh, like me, a girl after my own heart. But so... Um, she didn't know really much of what she wanted other than that she'd like to have a mixed metal piece. So that's going to be, we decided on a copper back plate and then a sterling silver bezel. And that's as far as we got. Um, and then I've been super busy with a couple local shop deliveries uh, getting to the next level of YouTube, yada, yada, yada. You guys know if you're following me. Anyway, um, what I did today, and I don't do this on a regular basis because it's not my style, but with custom pieces, um, it is what I do. And where is my stuff? Hang on. But what I did was, um, just off the top of my head, I, I just put together a couple of simple designs, um, took some pictures and sent them to her, more weeding out what she not necessarily, what she does not care for, or what might be her favorite designs. So this was the first one um, I did, and I'll kind of explain some things. Uh, I was thinking of more of like a circle, and then the sides would almost look like sun rays kind of thing. And then I listed with pictures of the different um, bezel designs, the sterling silver bezel designs, and um, had them taped to the page, numbered with what they were. And so that was design number one. And again, we hadn't decided on any kind of what we were doing for the stamping, because I know it can get a little confusing and I try to keep things as simple as possible. But the next one um, I put together um, was this design, which was more of an opal. I mean, sorry, an oval, as opposed to a, you know, a round. I wanted to see what, I mean, the stone is oval, obviously, but I'm talking about the back plate and the overall shape of the pendant. So um, sent this as design number two, did get a little bit more detailed with some of the stamping um, suggestions. And I even put together a sampling of what some of the stamping would look like. And this is just using aluminum foil, right? And so sent her a picture like this of what they would look like. And then with the, the blackening, the patina or whatever I decide to use, and then like mark them what it would kind of be like. So there's the leaves, right? So the leaves could do around there. Here's little star flowers there, down here. This one is kind of a Southwestern design and so on and so forth. 
So that gave us an idea as to some possibilities. I mean, there's lots more that can be done. But so I sent her just those couple of things and she did text me back and said she prefers the oval shape to mimic the shape of the stone. I support that. She liked the swag, sterling silver bezel, which is this one, because it reminds her of people holding hands. Isn't that sweet? And like holding hands and then holding them up, like in a celebration or unity. I love that. And then the, the stamping she liked were just the simple circles, which I have different sizes of those circles. So very simplistic in um, the design. And I love that. So that's what we're gonna do today, okay? Or attempt to. <laughs> All right, on with the show. Oh, and thanks so much for your continued support. Really guys. And I just want to give a big shout out and many, many thanks to Jules, who recently bought me a cup of coffee. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate your support and hope to see you in future videos. So here I'm measuring the bezel around the stone. and marking it an approximate measurement. With a fine tipped Sharpie. And what I like to do, you may have noticed from other tutorials is I use like a plastic card, a business card or whatever, put some double sided uh, tape on it so that I can put my gemstone the cabochon right on there and it keeps it from slip sliding around and I can still move it so that's just a little tip so then I'm going to use some shears to cut this and go from there okay let's get this soldered Let's check it's, okay, it's soldered. And let's check it's fit before it goes into the pickle pot. And it fits perfectly. So off to get cleaned in the pickle solution. 24 gauge copper sheeting. This still has the um, protective film on it, front and back. I'm gonna use 24 gauge. This is the template that I had previously used to measure the design, right? So I'm just gonna trace this out onto the sheet metal. With a Sharpie. Just so I know where the whole thing is gonna be. And this is a 40 by 30 millimeter oval measurement. And that's what that looks like. And then I'll just cut with the jeweler saw. Something like that. Put my initials on the back.
looks good to me. We gotta clean it up first into the pickle pot. Okay, out of the pickle pot. Let's see. It looks good to me. A nice, clean seal. Now let's see how well the stone fits. Fits great, fits great. And you know, we use the floss so that we can easily pull the stone out because there is no hole in the back to push it through. So if it gets stuck in there, this is all you have. And we use dental floss. So on to the next, I'm gonna stamp, go ahead and stamp this back plate now. Cool, cool, cool. I actually used this uh, template thing again to put on here and get it as even as I could and uh, drew the outline again. Cause then that way I know I wanna try and keep the stamping on the inside of this marking, right? So quick show of these are different, just circle stamps. Some are kind of like divoted. I have two different size divots. Two are flat and then two have like points on them. Oops. So I'm gonna use all six of these and do random dots all around the bezel. I mean the back plate. Look at that, this looks pretty cool. I like it. Okay, now I need to saw this out and then I think I'll save the sanding and the filing for tomorrow. I'm trying to learn how to pace myself. Okay, it's sawed. And so tomorrow I will do the filing I still have to get better at not beating the hell out of it, but I kind of like that texture on the back. I think it looks cool, but most probably legitimate silversmithers or metal smithers would be appalled because it's supposed to be flat. <laughs> but I like it. Maybe that's my signature, huh? <laughs> anyway, I think this is going to be a cool looking necklace. I think she'll be extremely happy. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. So I'll pick up tomorrow, guys. Okay guys, so after I did the filing, um, I went ahead and attached the bale. I did a sterling silver bale. And um, then I was, <laughs> I textured this little handmade bale with the little dots and thought I would do like it hanging off of here, which in theory it looked good, but I, I couldn't get it, I couldn't figure it out. Um, quickly, what I did was I attached it this way and tried to solder it here at the point, right here. But as you can see, it doesn't really hang right. It's, yeah, so I'll have to do some more research on that. I'm, I'm super inexperienced with this, you guys. But anyway, I went back to the jump rings and put three jump rings on. I did solder them closed. So I have to do a little bit of filing or more filing. You saw me do the initial filing. This has been pickled, but I need to do some more filing and um, sanding to get it ready for the stone. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. So guys, I wanna share a little tidbit. I've been watching a lot of um, tutorials lately about, uh, I guess they're 
of artisans from almost third world countries, you know, where they don't have all these crazy high tech tools that we have access to. And so their skills are, are using supplies that are very uh, rudimentary. Is that the word I'm looking for? Very old school, very untechnologically advanced, such as a brass brush. <laughs> and that's what they use for the cleaning up after the soldering. And I'm like, let me try it. Now it does scratch your pieces, but that's what the sanding, um, you know, with the radials and whatnot will, will get that polish up. But for after they do the soldering, and remember how I was struggling to get inside bezels and stuff because it's such small spaces. Well, this little brush really gets in there, gets the inside of the, the uh, actual bezel. And so, yeah, a brass, a brass brush. Say that fast 10 times. Um, you can get these for like a dollar or something. So don't be afraid to use these even on your soft soldering pieces. Um, they're great. And it's just a little elbow grease and um yeah so i'm i'm happy with that okay so now i'm going to move on to my radials and do some uh sanding and real quick um i use these i got off of amazon they're like a no name made in china they're just a lot cheaper than the um one sold say at rio grande or some other supply i think they use I can't pronounce it. Anyway, this at least shows you the different uh, numbered grits. And you're supposed to, when you're doing a major sanding thing, start with like an 80, then you move to a 120, down to or up to a 220. So they get finer and finer grit. And um, I have used the, the real tough you know, harsh, coarse ones, but this piece isn't too, too bad, really, just from the um, the brass brush. So I may even start with the 400, but I, I have 200, 400, 600, 1,000, and 2,500 grit out if I need them. And um, so that's these. You can see by the wear, on these, <laughs> which ones I use the most. And I'd say I use these three grits the most, um, the 600, 1000, and the 2500. Look at, that's my go-to, but that's even just for a quick polish. But this one's getting a little um, worn down too. So I'm gonna replace this one for when I get there. So I'm going to start, I think, with the 400 and see what it looks like. And I've started using this bench pin a lot more. Um, this is for the sawing, but it's also really nice to be able to brace your piece on this as opposed to just this because it has, you know, different areas that you can put it down in there and slots and edges on the side where just a table, you're really limited. So, um, yeah, if you have one of these bench pins with your jeweler saw, look at other things. People, you know, and I've only learned this stuff from watching tons of YouTube tutorials. So, um, yeah, just little tidbits on that. So I'm going to try this 400 grit and see if it's needed. One stroke. And you can see. So yes, I'm gonna start with that one. And I'm gonna go in one direction with this one. And then when I switch to another one, I'm gonna turn the piece and go the opposite. That's how you are technically supposed to do that. But I'm not gonna do this on camera because, you know, it's just the same thing over and over and over, okay? 
and I'll do this off camera to save time too. I also forgot to mention to get these little finger cots. I had originally got these for working with um, the soft soldering and they don't really do much for protecting your fingers from heat, but they're great to protect it from if you slip or you get too close because these discs or even a file will hurt if you, you know, accidentally slip or whatever. So these finger cots, again, got them on Amazon. And I'm done with the polishing, or the sanding, I should say. I'm sure it's gonna have some more polishing. This is the longest part of the whole process. So I was, um, when I was doing all that, I was thinking about, do I wanna patina this? Um, of course, I do wanna darken the recessed areas and my maker's mark which is just the initials of my business. And sometimes I use like that, um, the painter's markers that are a, an acrylic and then I'll seal this because I'll tell you why I'm leaning towards that is because if I do patina, it's also gonna patina the silver, which means more polishing afterwards. And it cha does change the color of the silver to more of a, you know, a well, a patina silver. And so it'll be like a gunmetal. And um, it'll also take away the high shine of the copper. So I kind of think I want to do that because it's going to naturally, over time, naturally patina anyway. So I think I'd rather do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the markers, which is that, this is that pen that I had showed you guys before. Well, it's a marker and it's basically acrylic paint. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Sorry, I keep going off, you know, before I clean it up, okay? simple as that then you let that dry a little bit and dab it off and then wipe it um, with like a coffee filter or something that isn't quite as absorbent because you don't want um, to catch the black that's down in the recessed areas that's defeating the whole purpose so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and flip it over and do the texture on this side okay Okay, so this is um, what it looks like with the darkened recessed areas. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the stone now. Woohoo! Okay, here we go. Drop that in there. And remember, do the four corners you do start wherever you want do one side do the opposite that's how you kind of get started and know that your piece is as equal in there as it can be and just for the first few you kind of do that you go back and forth So the stone is centered in there pretty well. 
And once it is, then you can go ahead and just do the rest. And this is a rocker bezel pusher, I guess it's called, to where you kind of put it down here and rock it over the top. Or some people will rock it this way. Kind of whatever works for you. So that's that. And then you use uh, this tool as a burnisher and just kind of glue over the edges and burnish it like you would in like a soft solder, putting your tape on and then you burnish, same theory. But with stones, you kind of got to be careful depending on how fragile they are and how rough you are with them. So let me finish this up. So here it is, guys. Ooh what a great design. I like those circles. Pretty. So I'm gonna send her a black cord as well as a copper chain to go with it, and that way she can pick and choose what she wants. And it's not, you know, it's not perfect, but as, um, as you all know, we as creators are our absolute worst critics. <laughs> no doubt about it. I love it. I would wear it, but I definitely see flaws in it. But I really like that um, texture on the back. I think it's really unique. Reminds me of like boulders or bubbles or little pebbles on a beach. I think I got a little adhesive or something on there. Oh, there it goes. That's better. Anyway, what do you think, guys? I dig it. I like the silver against the copper. And of course, it can always be patinaed. Here's the difference, right? This is what a patina, this is a naturally occurring patina. This is also a naturally occurring patina. It does change, kind of gets kind of reddish before it gets dark. But yeah, that's, that's the difference. So I think um, unless, she, again, she wants it pre-patinaed, I can do that for her. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. It was fun. I love creating for custom work. I really do. It's, it's my thing. It can be a challenge, especially when you're dealing with complete strangers, for sure. But um, okay, I think that's it for today, guys. I appreciate you. Until next time. Bye.